So today I wanted to talk with you about the opportunity to use your shares um, to promote your mission and goals, to improve company policies, to reduce risk, and to improve long-term shareholder value. So at, and I'll just briefly talk about As You So, I'm president of As You So, and we are a nonprofit group that does shareholder engagement. And we do it across a range of activities from environment to human rights to waste management, environmental health, et cetera. And we often represent organizations in, in shareholder engagement so that um, organizations such as yourselves don't have to take the laboring or in doing shareholder engagement. I won't go through this. I um, have a lot of slides here. I'm going to go quickly today, but this is um, the shareholder, the deck allows you to look at some of this stuff in more depth. One of our theories of change is that corporations have um, grown in economic power and clout. And so we believe that because of this, they are also um, fundamental drivers of change. And that change can be good and that change can be bad. So we um, you know, it can be from climate change and resource degradation to improving practices, to creating efficiencies, to improving transparency and improving the way that these corporations work in the world. So we think it's important to, to actually work with companies. And as you all know, and I'm sure you've heard a lot of, um, and Ken just mentioned this morning, that improving corporate responsibility, doing ESG, thinking about these things can actually improve shareholder value. And so there is a whole range of issues on which shareholders engage corporations. And it can be climate change, sustainability, um, high executive pay, gender pay equity, whether boards are diverse enough to make good decisions. So there's a whole range of issues, and these are just a few of them. We put out a um, proxy preview, which looks at all of the environmental and shareholder engagements. So if, you ha if you're interested in this arena, this is a good place for you to understand what's going on out there, what you might participate in, who are the groups that are driving those engagements. And um, if you're interested in participating, you can just call those groups up. So this is a, a great resource. Um, so there, these are the range of corporate engagement activities from directly voting, which is incredibly important. I think that people um, don't always understand that corporation and boards pay attention when um, to shareholder votes because it matters to corporations. And so that's an important one. Working with mutual fund managers, so where you don't hold shares directly, where you can't vote directly, you can also um, talk to your fund managers, and that's important. And I, as I'm sure you've heard, they care. They want to know what, you're, what you think is important. And a lot of times picking up the phone can make a difference. Um, directly engaging with, with companies, calling them up, writing letters, talking to them, important, all important. And then when companies refuse to engage or refuse to take what you think is important action, you can move on to fair, filing shareholder resolutions or even attending AGMs and speaking in an AGM is important because that allows you to speak directly to management and to the board. So you probably have seen some of these steps, but you have to know what you, what you own. You have to... Um, just determine what your priorities are. So what is of interest? What do you think is important to your mission? What do you want to change in terms of, of corporate behavior? Where do you think risks are? And then um, create some kind of guidelines or um, just either internal guidelines or specifically in some instances, um, and I guess I am getting ahead of myself, but in voting directly, you can look at what's going on. You, you can, so you can directly vote your shares. That sometimes can take a lot of work. So a lot of times you will use um, proxy voting services. And here's a number of them. As you note, ISS has general voting guidelines. And then they've got SRI gu voting guidelines. So that's important because, um, and then proxy impact is a service that does more one-on-one. -on -one, so you can speak more directly. This is what we care about. And they'll vote the way you want. There is, we're starting to see institutions create guidelines themselves. So CalPERS has created um, voting guidelines, CalSTRS, and Stanford. And I think this is important because it's, it's a process for you to figure out, well, what's important? How do you want to vote? How do you want companies to hear? You know, what do you want companies to hear? And here we just did a very quick uh, comparison. So this is State Street. So if you're just in State Street, this is a comparison of what your voting will look like as compared to, for instance, CalPERS with its new guidelines. So it's a distinct difference in terms of how your votes will be, your votes will be voted. And so creating your own guidelines sometimes makes sense. Uh, as you so has created 
voting guidelines, and so those are available, and I'm happy to make them available to anybody. You can, where you don't hold shares directly, you can't vote directly, you can also work with your managers in terms of letting them know what's important in terms of giving them guidelines, or just, as I said, communicating with them directly is important. You can also directly engage with companies and elements of engagement. I think it's important to understand that what you're doing is talking with companies, letting them know what is important to shareholders, thinking about cooperative solution. Companies have in, um, investment managers. They are generally happy to speak with any kind of investors, and certainly larger investors, they're more interested in speaking with them, so they often will make time. Um, Part of this engagement is bringing new ideas, bringing new concerns to companies. Oftentimes when we talk to them about new issues, they just haven't thought about these issues. They're doing their business, they're running their business, and so they're not thinking of some of these issues. I think uh, carbon asset risk was an interesting one. We went to companies and said, hey, we're concerned that this carbon, <clears throat> excuse me, this carbon risk is growing. And they said, well, we're oil companies. We don't, we don't do anything else and we really don't think about anything else. But three years later, most of these companies now are engaging on carbon asset risk, and they are actually making different decisions because they're thinking about these things. And so educating companies, letting them know what's important, what's coming up on the horizon, all very important. So there is a range of, of things you can do as, as investors or to engage. You can simply uh, write a letter to a company and say, hey, we're concerned about the way you're doing X, Y, or Z. You can write that letter yourself. You could sign on to... Um, coalition-based letters. So many of these groups are writing letters to companies on these issues. And so kind of plugging into that process through As You Sow, through SRIs, through um, there's a whole group um, series, etc. So there are letters going to companies and, and it's quite easy to sign on to them once you're in the right channels. Um, initiating direct dialogue. So once a letter is sent, you can follow up with a call. You can have a meeting with a company. And often that will create some progress. So you might agree that the company will look at it. And so you'll come back to them in six months and say, okay, so you looked at it. So what, has there been any progress? Have you made any decisions? So it can be an engagement. Um, oftentimes companies don't move quickly and we have to realize that, but this process continues to push them along the spectrum of consideration of these issues. So, but sometimes companies don't talk to you. Sometimes companies simply say, we are not interested in doing that. And that's when a shareholder resolution is, um, I forgot to turn my timer on. That's, that's when a shareholder re resolution would be filed. So where a company just says simply refuse to engage in some way, then we would say, okay, well this is a time to raise this issue to the boards and to the management. And a shareholder resolution means that the re we file a resolution with a company that's put on their proxy, their annual proxy. Shareholders will vote on it, and thank you. And um, even during that process, and here is the process. So you, you can talk with them. They might or might not move. You'll file a shareholder resolution. You'll have more discussions after the resolution is filed. Sometimes companies will take action, and you withdraw that resolution. It never goes onto their ballot. That's important to companies because once it's on the ballot, it's there forever, and it's publicly available. And so companies often want to keep issues off of the ballot. Ballot. So you might withdraw your resolution if they have taken the appropriate action. And um, so and you don't have to actually do all the hard work yourself. Companies like ours, what happens is that um, institutions or individual investors were, will give us representation. So they f sign a few forms, and then we represent them in engagements. We represent them on resolutions. So that's an easy way for you to file resolutions or to co-file resolutions. So you're not the lead filer, but you co-file. So that means adding your name and support and your shares to the effort. So those are ways that you can either directly file yourself, you can have a group like ours or an SRI represent you, and um, you can co-file. And this is just shareholder resolution one, um, 101. You just have to have $2,000 worth of shares and have held them for a year, and then you have to hold those shares through the AGM. So it's not a particularly difficult um, 
barrier to entry in terms of this. And just know, too, that shareholder resolutions are, for the most part, non-binding, but they do send important signals to corporations, to their management, and particularly to boards about what is important to shareholders. And, and companies, listen, I'll just end with saying, for instance, we had a resolution with Abbott Labs. We asked them to offer a infant formula that was GMO-free. It was a three-year process. At first, they said no. And then they said, well, we can't get the right um, formula, our soy, we can't get it GMO-free. And then they said, we just don't want to do it. And so two of those years, we went to a vote. First year, I think, was a 3% vote. The second year was a 6% vote. So those are not high numbers. But after the last vote, they came to us and said, we're offering a GMO-free infant formula. And that has been a very successful product on the market. So it was, a, again, a win-win for, um, for them and for shareholders. And this is just a note. If you are filing on your own, SEC um, companies can challenge your filing. Sometimes those are withdrawn. Or the SEC um, rules in favor of the companies. And so in that case, if you filed something, it, it doesn't go to a vote. So there is this litigation if you wanted to take it on yourself. But it um, doesn't always happen. And here's just a chart of the number of resolutions that are being filed. The dark ones are those that were omitted, so were lost at the SEC. But as you can see, a lot of them go to vote, and a lot of them are actually withdrawn successfully. So there is progress being made with a tremendous number, almost half of these resolutions filed. So, And i just say, so far, no universities have filed, so there's opportunity out there to file or co-file. And these are just some of the resolutions that um, the issues and the companies that we work with. So time is up. So I won't review these, but um, hopefully the deck itself could be helpful to you. I'm always available for questions. And um, you know, if you want to just know more about the process, we're always happy to talk with you about that. And um, if you're interested in potentially engaging, let us know. Danielle, in a minute we're going. In a minute we're going to be going into. Is it on? Okay. We're going to be going into those um, open sessions that you get to name. And we already have somebody who wanted to run a conversation at one of these tables about students and shareholder activism and what the opportunity is. So there is an opportunity to continue this conversation. And I also just kind of wanted to add the other side of this. Um, I think George was with me when I was in a meeting. I don't even remember what it was about, but there was all kinds of people there who worked inside corporations in all different areas, human resources and... Um, corporate social responsibility, the environment person, and what they said is even though shareholder resolutions often lose, they only get a 10% vote or a 24% vote, the impact inside the corporation is way disproportionate. The minute the president knows that this thing is coming, he finds the person in that department. They get the attention they weren't getting, they get the dollars they weren't getting. So they have an impact and a power that you can't even see if all you look at is the percentage of vote. So I thought I'd add that to it. And that was, they were all saying the same thing. It was very clear in the room, and it was very insightful to me to understand it. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we'll make sure we get Danielle to join that table.